Uh, Senator Lina, you have the floor now. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, my, uh, my countrymen, there is uh, one thing that bind us uh, together in this uh, event. And that is, uh, we love our country. We want changes to happen in our country. We want to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. For everyone to be given an opportunity to uh, develop his or her uh, potentials as human uh, beings. We love our country and we want to see that uh, the family of nations give due respect to our country and our people. We have been dreaming about this for a long, long time. That was the dream that uh, our forefathers also entertain since uh, 1898 when uh, we won the fight against the colonizing country, Spain. Although The Americans took away that uh, independence that uh, we deserve. The Japanese came, took over temporarily, and then uh, World War II ended with so many Filipinos losing their lives fighting alongside the Allies in 1946, the Commonwealth period was ended. Theoretically, we were in control at the time of our own destiny, but uh, neo-colonialism has its own uh, way of showing up and uh, our elite uh, failed to sustain the momentum of uh, nationhood and independence. We are in this period of our history when uh, situation is not getting any better. While uh, we have a government that is in place with the three branches of uh, government, executive, legislative, and judiciary, and the local governments in the local level, the dream that uh, our forefathers have uh, uh, embraced until now are still dreams. The poverty level is still very high in our country. The government uh, is still moving as if it is still in an experimental stage. And there is so much to be done to make those dreams come true. The uh, way that we decided to go in uh, building our country and in the installation and management of government is the uh, system of democracy where theoretically the people 
uh, make the decision. Sovereignty resides in them and all government authority emanates from them. That in essence is democracy. An ideal concept. Unfortunately, democracy in our country is still very much a work in progress as it has many <clears throat> many imperfections why because uh, there is really no way by which people can make their own decisions independent of uh, influences by those who have uh, a better share of the wealth of the country when a number of people <clears throat> is ignorant and uh, are busy trying to survive economically where ignorance uh, stalks the land when political dynasties reign supreme there cannot be any genuine uh, democracy Decision is not made by the people, but decision is made by those who wield the economic and uh, the political power combined. The newest <clears throat> wealth uh, developers are the politicians who have made uh, government a business enterprise combined with the old rich and the, old, and the uh, emerging tycoons. They hold sway and they decide what happens to our country rather than the people deciding for the country. So how do we go about making democracy work? My countrymen, We need revolutionaries. We need uh, Filipinos who will uh, be willing to lay down their lives if necessary. We need uh, Filipinos who will share their time, talent, and treasure to the cause of democracy and to the cause of good governance, prosperity for all in a sustained manner. These Filipinos I am referring to will take up the cudgels of leadership for the rest of the country. They may come from all sectors of society they may come even from the landed gentry. They may come even from uh, the business sector. They may come from the ranks of the fishermen and the farmers and the laborers. I do not believe in class distinction. Everyone can rise above his own class. Mm. Mm. My countrymen, we, we, need, we need a critical number of Filipinos who will assume that leadership role. We are 110 million Filipinos. If we can only get 1%, of Filipinos who know the vision for our country, clear on the mission, clear on a program of government which will address the problems of the country, then that's the only time we can hope that we can turn this country around.
these Filipinos that I am referring to. Unfortunately, are difficult to find. In my personal life, as I belong to the 70s, working with the young people who dropped out of school, or were delayed from uh, their graduation because they had to go organizing their fellow youth or be immersed with the urban poor, the workers, the farmers, and the fishermen. That was the time in my life when I did not care about anything except the welfare of our country and our people. We have to go all out again and help motivate the young people of today that they have to rise to the occasion and meet the challenges of their generation. My generation helped bring about the return of democracy, even only in its form. But in substance, while we had EDSA 1 and even EDSA 2, in substance, democracy is still a, a very much work in progress. Leadership is the key. It's the, it's the quality of leadership in our country that will make the difference. If leadership is good, to put it simplistically, then the country will be good. Period. The quality of leadership that this country can produce will be the key that will open the door for good governance, prosperity for all, in a sustainable manner. It's the leadership that will uh, influence the rest of the people. to install a government that can carry out the needed reforms. Concretely, the programs of government that will include rapid industrialization, agricultural modernization, climate change mitigation and adaptation, Promotion of local autonomy. Pre high priority for education, health, science, and technology. Grassroots participation in all decision making. Protection of our national sovereignty. making sure that uh, what is ours is protected, like the resources that we have in our exclusive economic zone. A special protection program for the marginalized sectors of our society so that they can cope with the rest and be abreast in terms of development with uh, other members of society. In the end, when this leadership is present, 
then officials in government, national or local, will be the ones who are who will implement the needed programs in line with the vision and mission for our country. When I became governor of Laguna, armed with this strong desire to make a difference, I was able to organize down to the grassroots level. I made sure that the members of my uh, movement in Laguna underwent uh, um, a seminar and even refresher course. We were able to transform Laguna into a mix of industrial, industrialized and agricultural country. Was able to, the government of Laguna was able to reduce poverty, bringing down the poverty level from 48 to 18 percent in six year time. We were able to raise the needed revenue from local taxes and liberated ourselves from being dependent on our share in the national taxes. Laguna has the most number of uh, projects and value for money. Laguna was ahead compared to the rest of the country. We fought wetting in all fronts despite the threats to ourselves. I hope I thought that I could replicate what I did in Laguna when I became the ILG secretary. I wanted to share to my fellow governors and also to the mayors because I founded when I was governor of Laguna, the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines. Unfortunately, to my sad realization, the others were not in the same mold. They view politics differently from the way I viewed it, that politics is a way of serving the people in a very meaningful way. But let me tell you that this idealism that I still nurture up to this time was the product of my uh, development as a young person when I was recruited to a, uh, to a movement where we were given the training and orientation to love our country above ourselves. And thankfully, with God's help, as I was also renewed in the religious way in 1989, I was able to sustain myself, even if there were ups and downs, highs and lows, in terms of my commitment. But generally, I have remained committed to see that our country will be a better place to live in with leaders who will consider the country above their own interest. Let me go back and emphasize the role of leadership. From Batanes to Tawi-Tawi, can you imagine if we can form an organization 
that will lead a movement or change, to call it in a simple way. An organization comprised of individuals, young and old, men and women, but with the youth being a substantial part of the organization. To drill down in a very systematic way and sustained way, this um, love of country, the values of love of country, and even love of God. These leaders who would not be corrupted, these leaders who would also be supported by the organization, these leaders who would uh, um, be trained in the art and science of politics and governance, not just for today, but in the long haul, in a sustained manner, even if there is conflict or difference of opinion in the leadership, there can be the nationalistas and the liberals in an ideal setting where the difference is only their approach to, the, to solving the problems of the country. Never mind. As long as the leadership in both is united in the deliverance of our country. If every barangay has its own organization of idealistic people, competent, incorruptible, committed, charismatic even, and these are the qualities of leadership. They must be committed to love God and country. They must be competent. They know what is government, the workings of government. And they have the political skill as well. This must be a combination that must be achieved. The political skill and the competence to be administrator. Then the other qualification is the charisma, the ability to communicate, the ability to influence. Then the, the other is the character of the leader. And lastly, commitment. I refer to this as the five C's of leadership that uh, each one in that organization that I'm talking about must possess and must be present in a sustained way. Not falling victim to temptations of leadership. So my fellow, my countrymen, and I would like to address you as my fellow revolutionaries. There is no way by which we can make democracy work in this country. There is no way by which we can deliver our country from the present problems that is now facing without that leadership being present. Who will uh, bring about that leadership? You and I can start it here. Some people have their own initiatives. So we just have to compare notes, coordinate with them to hasten the task of installing this kind of leadership in our country and consequently the government that will bring about the needed the realization of the vision and the mission 
to raise up as many servant leaders in our country to carry out the agenda for development which will bring about good governance, prosperity for all in a sustainable manner. In this way, democracy will be meaningful although it will always be a work in progress as improvement at the top will always be there there is no stopping there is no dead end we have to push the frontiers of development in our country and that includes making sure democracy is achieved meaningfully and in a lasting way. I will be turning 70 this December. I started my public life when I was 17 as a young activist. Nung araw, sa dalampasigan ng Paranaque, malinis pa yung mga ilog, uh, mga dagat doon. Nagse-seminar kami roon. And uh, we were given time to do reflection. And I saw the birds flying in the air going towards a certain direction. Ang sabi ko sa sarili ko, mabuti pa yung ibon na yun. Alam ang katutunguhan, alam ang direksyon. Ako dapat ganun din. Alam ko ang direksyon ng aking buhay. So from then on, I said to myself, I can no longer entertain that uh, traditional childhood dream of just obtaining good education, learn a good job, marry a beautiful girl, putting up a nice house, being able to travel and having the good means of transportation. I turned my back against those, those dreams. And I pursued a different path. Even to the extent of having been delayed in my schooling. Fortunately, with God's help, I was able to finish my law school, my law schooling. Another realization is that uh, one cannot achieve change in consciousness, change in consciousness, if one does not go through a traumatic experience or an experience that will break you. And I was broken. I was broken. I veered away from the routinary pattern of existence. Another realization is that if change is to come, you have to be strong. You have to nurture yourself and be ready for the fight because the establishment will not give up its perks and privileges. But it cannot be a superman's fight. Each one who has seen the light must carry that light and share it with others. 
I was successful in some way. But not successful in many ways as I still feel a voice that I still feel I am a voice in the wilderness. But let's target one million people or two million at the most of committed, competent men of character, charismatic, then we can begin to hope that we can turn this country around. There is now political noise. Eight, nine months to go before the election. Again, we are focused on who will be the best candidate. We look for the personalities. Luma na yon. If we want change, yes, we will look for the persons. But we have to make sure that that person has clear solutions to the problems of the country. That's why I emphasize more on programs of government. Paano ba talaga ma iaahon ang mga may hirap sa kahirapan? Paano bang edukasyon ay magiging mataas na kalidad na edukasyon ay magiging uh, madaling makamtan ng ating mga kabataan? Paano makakalikha ng kalidad na trabaho? Hindi na pag-uusapan yan. Kung mapag-usapan man, ay pabalat bunga or lip service lamang. Nasa dapit hapon na ako ng aking buhay. When one turns 70, and I'll turn 70 this December, binabalikan ko yung aking kabataan na ang pangarap makita ang bukang liwayway sa dakong silangan na magbabadya ng kaunlaran, katarungan at pagkapantay-pantay ng mamamayan. Hindi ko nakita yung bukang liwayway nung katanghalian ng aking buhay nandun na nga ako sa gobyerno. Ang panalangin ko kahit na hindi na bukang liwayway, silahis na lamang makita ko, ay masaya na ako. Ngayon, magdadapit hapon na, malapit na sa takip silim ng aking buhay. Wala ako nakitang bukang liwayway. Hindi ko nakita ang silahis. So ang panalangin ko ngayon, kahit banaag na lamang ng bukang liwayway, ay aking masilayan, ay masaya na rin akong may himlay. May panahon pa. May panahon pa. At habang may buhay, may pag-asa. Kaya lamang, kinakailangan ng pagmamadali at sa pagmamadaling yan kailangan ang maraming kamay na magkakapit bising mga kamay na mag-aalay ng sarili lakas, talino kayamanan o buhay man para sa ating inang bayan. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. At kung kayo may mga katanungan, handa naman akong 
magbigay ng kasagutan. Mabuhay kayo, mga minamahal kong kababayan. Thank you, Senator Lina. And uh, for those who are present today, if you have some question or inquiry, then just raise your hand.